Beneficent, the merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the world. I bear witness that there is, regardless to land or label or language, but one God. And I bear witness to Osiris, to Isis, to Abraham, to Jesus, to Moses and Muhammad, and all of the great worthies who came in the great line of divine. I greet you, my beloved and beautiful black brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. I will try not to hold you very long today, but something is very heavy on my heart, especially with now getting the news of the fate of our young brothers. Yes, sir in the so-called Central Park yes, sir. Right. Jogger case. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It has weighed on my heart all night yes, since sir. getting the news on yesterday. And as we look at the case of Sister Mariam Muhammad or Tawana Brock, yes, sir. Right. now we look at this devil white woman. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. How they attempted to give us an image of this woman of purity and yes, sir. To yes. evoke so much sympathy and empathy right. yes, around the honor and the purity of this cracker woman. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. So I have chosen as my subject today. So hold on to your seatbelt. Yes, Don't be shocked. Yes, but don't let it shock you. Right. My subject today is the white woman is a bitch. <laughs> so, I'll leave off the second part because if you leave off the second part, you'll think I'm being bold. A female two-legged dog. We are taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that of all our studies, history is best qualified, most attractive to reward our research, that if we know what happened yesterday, we can intelligently discuss today because today is built on yesterday and tomorrow is built on today. All kinds of theories on how the white man got here. Some say that all of the people on the face of the planet Earth used to at one time be white. Come on. That everybody was white, but because they migrated to hot, hotter climates, that we turned black as a result to go into the temperate zone and to the torrid zone. What foolishness. <laughs> Climate does not determine the pigmentation of the skin. It is in the skin something that is called melanin, and melanin determines the pigmentation of the skin, and the more we study it now, we are finding that melanin even goes deeper. A study of melanin, we are finding that it's linked to more than just pigmentation, that it might even have something to do with personality. It might have something to do with the core spirituality yes. and even morality of a people. Yes. For the people who lack melody, then they repel to a greater degree than those who have melanin. All things have melanin, but we're talking about the greater concentration of melanin. The people who are the most melanated people are the people who are in tune with nature, yes. in tune and in harmony with the universe and the cosmos. Yes. We are taught that for every physical law, there's a mental and a spiritual counterpart. Yes. Come on. White people repel sunlight. Yes. Come on. White is the absence of color. Yes. It is not the presence of color, but the absence of color. Yes. Black is not a color at all. Black is actually the essence from which of the colors come. But in all of the languages, however you view the white man as a white woman, it is always in this sense of being a demelanated people, yes. a mutant people, yes. an extreme case of albinism walking around on the face of the planet Earth. And so in 
up. These are a demelanated mutant people, and they have what is considered a, many of them, a calcified pineal gland. We'll get into that at another time. But if these are the people who represent an absence of color and less melanin than the people of the earth who are made in God's image and after his likeness, the black woman and the black man, then that means that to some degree they are out of tune and out of sync with nature and the harmony of the sphere. Yes, right. For everything in nature bows and submits to the sunlight. Right. Everything needs sun because sun is the great giver of light, light, and energy That's in the right. universe. Right. Look at the sunflower. This is a flower called the sunflower. Right. As the sun moves, the sunflower moves. Right. In whatever direction the sun moves, the sunflower turns to right. a minimal degree in that direction right. so that it can soak in and Bathe in the sunlight. Drink in the rays of the sun. The sun's rays striking the planet at its imaginary equator causes it to spin at 1,037 and a third miles per hour, making a complete revolution on its own axis every 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 46 seconds. But it is sunlight striking the planet at its equator that makes it spin and move and causes as it moves around the sun bowing in submission to the divine law of almighty God it causes the change in the four major seasons but it is light that causes that and if we are to get out of the condition that we are in as a dead man and a dead woman a dead black man and a dead black woman then we must have light in our mind light to strike our hearts and a light to strike our lives in a way, lives, minds, and hearts in a way that will move us. Yeah. What kind of light do we need? Come on. Good, good question. Will a flashlight work? No. Oh, that's not the right kind of light. What about a match light? No, no that won't work. What about a little candle light? No, no that won't do it. What about a bud light? No, a bud light won't do it either. It's got to be the light from the wisdom, the supreme wisdom of Almighty God. It must come from the very nature and soul of the people of God, the black man and the black woman. That ancient wisdom and enlightenment, supreme wisdom, is what will cause your brain cells to rotate and will cause your lives to rotate and cause us to move from the state or condition that we are in to a higher plane and higher quality of human life and development as we move beyond womanhood and manhood yes. back to Godhood yes. as the family of God himself. Yes. We, need light. we being the people of the light, yes. the sons and daughters of the light, we bathe in the sun. That's right. In Africa, in some parts, we can walk around what the old folks call, or the elders call, buck neck. Yes, now, that's real neck. <laughs> that ain't just neck. We walk around buck neck. <laughs> walk in the sun. No sun can. That's right. That's Come on. Right. That's no right. man can. That's right. No caliban. No suntan lotion. Right. We just walk around and bathe in the That's sun. Right. Yeah. Work in the sun. That's right. huh? Worship That's in right. the sun. Yes. Play and recreate in the sun. That's right. Make love in the sun. That's right. Sleep in the sun. Yeah. Eat in the sun. Yeah. Swim in the sun. Bathe in the sun. Right. The ahead. sons and daughters of the light. The sons and daughters of the sun because we are in harmony when we are ourselves and when you leave us alone. We are in harmony with God's divine law. What you see on the streets of Harlem and Brooklyn and Bronx and Queens and Long Island, you're not looking at a real black man. You're not looking at a real black woman. I'm not looking at a real black man. You're not looking at a real black man. I'm not looking at a real black woman, and you're not looking at a real black man. 
what we are looking at is a black man and a black woman under the effects of captivity. Yes. Under the effects of captivity. Yes. This is not really us. No, what you see on the streets out there, that's not us. That's right. Pipping our women. That's right. Two live crews. Yes. What kind of madness is this? Right. Got our sister out there with her behind out. Yes. Tell me they're down at the Jack the Rapper conference. A convention in Atlanta, Georgia, walking sisters around with almost G strings on. They mingling among the men like whores and prostitutes. Any black man that will take his black woman and strip her almost naked and turn her behind up to the public is not a black man, but he's a punk. And we need to
I joke about it sometimes, but it's real. I can imagine dear Abby. <laughs> and the white man writing, Dear Abby. Dear Abby. <laughs> I've waited so long, Abigail. But gee whiz, I just had to write to you. It's just troubling me so much. It's just such a far out problem. <laughs> it's getting the best of me, Abby. <laughs> It's Susie Sugar. I'm having problems. It would be all right if she were with uh, another man, but it's not another man. <laughs> and you know, Abby, how we do things. It would even be all right if it were another woman. But it's not another woman, Abby. <laughs> oh, even if it were a nigger, Abby, I could take a nigger. But it's not a nigger, Abby. It's our dog. It's true. 
The scripture hints and gives us a sign that the oppressors of the earth, and primarily one great beast, mentioned in Revelation and in the book of Daniel, one great beast, and that great beast is America, and the Old Testament talks about this great beast even beyond Daniel, that there would be an uprising. Says that their cities would be set on fire. Right. Says the people would come from a distant land, right. from a far land, and their only desire would be to lay him low right. or to kill him. Right. It speaks of the hint of even the women of this oppressor being raped by other nations of the earth. Right. It talks about the murder of the women of that oppressive nation. It talks about the babies, the little blonde haired blue-eyed, pale-skinned babies of the oppressor. The Bible talks being snatched from the white mother's arms and the baby's head being dashed against the rocks. This is the Bible talk. I don't have any regret at all over anything that happens to the white man or the white woman. None. I don't care how you feel about that. I don't care what you think of me about that. As many of our people as they have murdered and they continue to murder. As many of our women as they have raped. I don't condone rape. But I don't care about a devil being busted in the head with bricks and rocks and beaten with pipes. The only problem is a no good devil did die. Then we find out that the devil was lying. 
Didn't he commit suicide? Then the devil killed himself. Well, that's all right. The only regret I have is that we didn't get a chance to kill him. That's the only regret I have. You can be weak if you want to. We will never be strong until you face the reality of what is happening to us. We will always be weak and at the feet of white people, grumbling and begging at their feet, begging for the crumbs that fall from their table. We will always be at their mercy and the mercy of their lily white courts. Judge Bruce, cut them loose, Bruce Wright says, Black Rose, white justice. Black Rose, white justice. It's just us. Meaning just white folks, it's just for them. Statue of Liberty, blind. Well, that could mean something else. Doesn't mean necessarily fairness and impartiality. Blind could mean that you turn a deaf ear and you cover your eyes when it's time to give justice to the oppressed. The huddled masses that are now at your shore and at your door didn't come to your shores and your doors as immigrants who came to build your country for you. A blind bitch sitting in the harbor who does not see justice for the black man and the black woman. When I say bitch, it only means a dog. We take it and make it a, a negative, uh, cursing word, but a bitch is a dog, a chippy dog that will raise its, her tail and go around from dog to dog to dog. It makes no difference. And the white woman is that kind of a two-legged dog that will go out in Central Park in the middle of the night like a chippy, low-down, two-legged bitch dog looking for somebody in the midnight hour. Somebody says she has a black boyfriend. I don't know if it's true or not. If she has one, he is a boyfriend. Huh? He's the dog's best friend. Can't be a man friend. Black men have black women. Black men don't have white women. You can wear all the dreadlocks you want to and then leave out of here and go get you a white woman. You can wear all of the kitchen cloth you want to and then go out of here and get you a white girl that walk through Harlem walking your dog on your lips, walking through Brooklyn and Brooklyn and the Queens and Long Island and Jersey and see your dog because you are nothing but a white man's nigga in a dressed up way. Leave the white man's diseased white woman alone. And you leave the diseased white man alone, sister. Diseased mind, diseased spirit, diseased morals, diseased in every way have corrupted the very air that we have to breathe and the water we have to breathe. Have mixed truth and falsehood together. He's lying down. But a chippy, a bitch, a two-legged dog that will parade herself in Central Park hoping for a cheap thrill, hoping that someone will see her. And we are not sure who did it to the dog. But the sperm or the semen that they got from the bitch. Remember, a bitch is a two-legged dog. I have to keep reminding you because you're so weak and punkified until you will try to make it other than what I'm saying. But whatever definition you have for a bitch, that's the white woman. You take it on that one. <laughs> the sperm or the semen that they find from her belongs to her boyfriend. It didn't belong to Yusuf Salon. It didn't belong to our other two brothers. It belonged to somebody else. And according to the science of forensics in police investigation and police science, the, the important role that DNA plays in investigation and fact-finding, DNA is supposed to be like a print, a fingerprint. In some cases, it's even better than a fingerprint. 
And so when they run the forensic test and they run the DNA test, it doesn't come up showing any connection with any of our young brothers. It's only connected to the bitch, two-legged dog, white girl, and those who were connected to her, but nothing to do with our young brothers. There'll come a time when we will have all kinds of pipes. And we'll be beating white folks everywhere. When you wake up, when you wake up, that's what he's afraid of. When you wake up, you'll be killing everything white that ain't right that's in sight. All over the place. But you'll start by killing the white in yourself. We'll start killing the white in ourselves. The first pipe crew, we must take the pipe and start beating the white man out of us. Right. Beating the white woman out of our minds and our hearts and our ways and the way we deal with each other. Yeah. We deal with each other the way the white man would deal with us. That's we right. deal with each other the way the white woman would deal with us. That's right. She's a bitch. She's a two-legged, low-down dog. Didn't remember, she said. She couldn't positively identify anybody. Well, how do we know she was raped? Who said she was raped? She's been giving it up all over the world. And they like whips. They like to be beat. They like blood. Am I lying? I mean, they get their thrills. Jimmy Swagger. Jimmy Swagger. <laughs> Would pay big money. Jimmy didn't want to get in the bed. Jimmy just liked to watch what was happening in the bed. Jimmy would pay big money to sit there and ooh and ah <laughs> over what was going on in the bed. They're nothing but dogs. Yes, they are. Right. Freaks. Yes. Right. That's not your nature. No. You were not a homosexual in Africa, black man and black woman. You were not what you call gay, and I don't use that term That's gay. Right. It dignifies madness too much. Yes, gay. Like you have to. <laughs> Hell, you mean gay. You didn't come here that way. The Watusi didn't walk through Africa, Booty Ghani, baby. Booty Ghani. The little Twa, pick me sister, didn't walk through making muscles and trying to be a man. I was at the Harlem Week activities yesterday, watching the sisters come through with African uh, uh, cultural attire on. Woman with woman. One sister came through, muscles bigger than any man in here. She been working out. Had on some tight jeans. Had her chifty cloth on. She was walking with her woman. She walked through the festival like this. Like she was Shaka, Shaka Zoo. Coming through. We didn't do that in Africa. Until the white man came among us. That's right. We just didn't do that. Right. And we didn't freak out over bodies in Africa. Right. Some parts of Africa, as I said earlier, we could be buck naked. Yes. We didn't trip on the body. No, the body is sacred. Yes. When you study the Afrocentric mind, which is rooted when it is itself and when it is in harmony with the true nature of itself, it is rooted in God's mind. That's right. And we see the body as a divine vessel and expression of God. Yes, That's the African way. Yes, we see the body as the temple of God. Yes, sir. yes it, is. it is. Where the very spirit of God dwells. Yes, Jesus said, you are the temple of the living God. Yes, That's the way we see the body in Africa. Black woman walking through the jungles of Africa. Big breasts. You don't see the brother <laughs> swinging through the trees, hollering, sister. Sister be naked and they jump out of the trees and jump on sister, beat her in the head with a coconut, and rape her in the bushes. We don't do that in Africa. It's not in our nature. 
here. Even after all of these years, it's hard to find it even today. It exists today because somebody's come with a new foreign way. Before the coming of the white man, you couldn't even find it. The body, the temple of God. That's the way we looked at it. Black man walked through the jungle naked. See a sister, he doesn't get all excited. That's his sister. Proper things at the proper time. Everything in its proper perspective. He understands the beauty and the, the aesthetic of the human divine form. That's just an expression again of God. He's the God, she's the goddess under the almighty God. That's the way the black man and woman is in Africa. That's our nature. But the white man, as public enemy says, as Chuck D, Flavor Flav, Terminator X, the S1W, and at that time, I believe, Pro Professor Grip was with them. And I don't never like to talk without mentioning Grip. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not going to go with the rip. I'm going to mention grip. Yes, sir. They took a page from Dr. Frances Crest Welsing in her Crest Theory of Color Confrontation in White World Supremacy and White People's Fear of Genetic Annihilation, and they wrote, Fear of a Black Planet. Yes, sir. Fear of a Black Planet. Why a fear of a Black Planet? Because white people believe that if the white woman freely cohabitates with the black man, that they will be white from the face of the planet Earth. Right. They believe that the black man can destroy white people totally. That's right. Now, there ain't no reason for you to form that kind of argument. <laughs> not what I'm advocating here today. <laughs> but that's their fear. Basketball. Big brown ball. Early sports, it was a big black ball. Representing the scrotum sack or the testes of the black male genitalia or the black male sex organ. What's the object of basketball? When you study psychology, and the psyche of people, you will understand that the games they play have something to do with what's happening down in their subconscious mind. Basketball, the object is to keep this big brown ball from getting down to the other end of the court because there's a hole down there with some white nets hanging from it representing the blonde hair that grows around the feet, the white female sex organ in the pubic area, and you want to keep this big black or brown ball from getting in that hole with the blonde or the white necks or hair hanging from it down on the other end of the court. Not only is the black man shooting it in, three-pointers from the top of the key, shooting from half court and making it go in. You can even have it way down on the other end of the court, he can take it off of the opposite team's back and throw it all the way down to the other end of the court on the bus and hit nothing but blonde neck. <laughs> but not only are we doing that, but now he, stopped, he can stop dribbling at half court. That means that he has learned how to get past obstacles. The black man can stop dribbling at 
say, oh, it's just basketball, but in the subconscious of the white man, he's just going to <laughs> It makes him feel less than even what he already is. He sits there cringing. My God, I don't have a chance. Even look Bud Webb. Everything 
was rooted in something sexual and freaky. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's their constant preoccupation. Yes, sir. So this two-legged dog, the white bitch dog in Central Park, yes, sir. was looking for a cheap thrill. Yes. I don't believe our brothers had anything to do with it. Yes, but she got more than she was looking for. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. She's no woman of honor. No, no woman that you should sit around crying for her. No, sir. Feeling sorry for her. She should have died. So teach a 
is us, the book of death would have swallowed up almost a whole a people. So the Bible speaks of this people in animalistic terms called nations beasts. So I know I can stand here today and call a white woman a bitch, a two-legged dog, if the Bible calls all of them dogs and beasts and animals and describes them as bears and tigers and dragons and gives them names of lions and other symbolic terms in the Bible. But you don't understand the Bible. You go in the Bible a fool and come out a bigger fool. You don't understand the Bible. You need a teacher in the Bible. You need someone who will make the Bible relevant to you. And if you call yourself a nationalist, you reject the Bible, most of you. It is because the Bible has done such a terrible job and a hell of a job against our people. We can understand the nationalists rejecting the Bible, but there is someone in our midst today who understands the book, can unravel the mysteries of the book. A man in our midst that God Almighty has put his spirit in that man and has shaped that man and fashioned that man, prepared him for this time, and he came under a mighty father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But that man in our midst today who knows the Bible is the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan. He knows this book. He knows how this book is connected to us getting land. He knows how this book is connected to us becoming a nation of people recognized by ourselves as a nation, but recognized as a world as a nation, by the world as a nation. Us becoming more conscious of our nationhood and developing statecraft or statehood where we have some of this good earth that we can call our own. It's all in the Bible when properly understood. The scripture says that they wanted in the Old Testament and the New Testament, kill the male and spare the female. So they want to lock up Brother Yusuf Salam and our other brothers. They took them right out of the courtroom. Nothing but babies. Yes, sir. But they dismissed the case of Sister Tawana Brawley. They said, even though she could identify her attacker, she didn't have amnesia. No memory at all. And one of the crackers even committed suicide. Pointing to the other and committed suicide. And they still kicked her case out of court. They caused to the white man, no black woman can be raped. It's never raped with a black woman. You feel that he owns. That's why you should leave Sister Shahrazad Ali alone and leave her book alone and stop putting these handkerchief-head Negro women up against her to try to debate her. These dead women who don't know nothing about being a black woman or don't know anything about the condition of black people. Shahrazad Ali is right in many ways, when she says that the black woman has been robbed of a knowledge of self, the black man has been robbed of a knowledge of self, that the black man has been swept from his divine position of power. But the Bible says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the ending, that as you ruled at one time, black man, it's going to all come back full circle to the black man ruling again. as a soldier in the army of the white man. Yes, right. Not willingly, really unwittingly. Yes, right. Any time a master, any time an oppressor conquers a people, the oppressor takes the women of that nation. Yes, right. How are you going to deny that? Yes. How can you argue with her? The base of her teaching comes from the honorable Elijah. That's right. That's right. That's right. For her book. The black man's guide to understanding the black woman. She has her own thoughts in there, 
but the faith of our book comes from the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's right. It's true. That's right. When a conqueror conquers the people, when he is able to, for the most part, vanquish the men of that nation, his next step is to take the woman. That's right. The woman becomes the booty. Come on. Yeah. She becomes the part of the spoils of war. Right. Yeah. And then he spoils her. Yeah. He puts his way in her head. Oh, he puts his philosophy, his doctrine, his